He was shot in the face. He was shot in the groin. He was cut. He was burned. He was beaten. He was tied up. His teeth had been bashed out with a bat. His skull sounded like Rice Krispies, according to the nurse in the emergency room. No part of his body was free of damage or scarring, either in the process of healing or freshly done. I'm speaking of Gabriel Daniel Fernandez, age eight, and Child Protective Services failed him. Law enforcement failed him. He was born in 2005, and he died in 2013. After eight months of begging for help, through the school, through the Department of Children's Services, through law enforcement, through anyone who would listen, this little boy lived in a wooden box in his mother's bedroom. He was locked up at night or for most of the day also. Some days they would put a blindfold over his eyes, a gag over his mouth, and even sometimes put socks in his mouth to keep the noise from coming out before they locked him in the box for the night. There was so much blood, old and new, around the apartment where he lived that the investigators ran out of the little arrows that they used to point to the evidence and had to go get more. And when they ran out of those, they had to start using a different color. There was over 1,200 pieces of evidence brought into court. This is the most horrific case I have ever heard of. This child was tortured for eight solid months. And when he would go to school and beg his teacher to help, she would call the Department of Children's Services. And each time she did, when Gabriel would come back to school, he would be in worse shape than the time before. Because you see, the Department of Children's Services would just call his mom, and his mom would take it out on him. Department of Children's Services never stepped in to actually do anything to protect him. The one time that a caseworker actually saw him was after his mother had jerked handfuls of hair out of his head and there was little scabs on his little head. And when the caseworker saw him, she laughed and made fun of him and the way he looked because of his hair. There was a time when the caseworker, which caseworker I'm not sure, but wanted to actually do something. But she needed approval through the supervisors. It was a Friday evening, and she called the supervisors. And she was informed that it was Friday evening. Everybody was getting ready to go home. She needed to just leave the case be. They didn't want to pay any overtime. So just tell him to go on home. I believe that was a time when the security guard that Gabriel had spoke with was trying to report the abuse. So because the caseworker was told to go home and not worry about it, she slid the information to the security guard. Yes, she broke the law. But I guess that was the only thing she thought was appropriate. So when the security guard called law enforcement or 911 to report the abuse on this little tiny eight-year-old boy, he was reprimanded and was told it wasn't an emergency. 
to go ahead and call the sheriff's department, not 911. He called the sheriff's department. He reported the abuse. He did what he was supposed to do. He did what he, he tried to do what was right. The sheriff's department just called the mother and informed her that they were going to send officers out to speak with Gabriel and try to scare him straight. Scare him into stop lying on people. Stop making these false reports on his mother and her boyfriend. So I'm assuming that's what the sheriff's department did. They sent out officers to scare Gabriel straight. So he would stop reporting all the abuse that was going on in his home. I mean, they couldn't see his hair was pulled out of his head. They couldn't see that his teeth had been knocked out. They couldn't see the bruises all over his face, the ligament marks across his neck where he'd been choked, the rope burns on his arms and his feet where they had tied him up. They couldn't see where they had shot him multiple times in the face with a BB gun. His legs covered in scars where they had shot him. When he finally made it to the hospital on that horrible night, there was even cuts above us, and they couldn't figure out what had caused that. There were so many injuries on this child that they, they covered his entire body. Right down to all of his fingers. Each finger was even damaged. On the way to the hospital, he went to Antelope Valley Hospital when they finally called that one night and said he was in cardiac arrest. Um, on the way, he was considered a level three, which is the highest level of an emergency that they can set the ambulance at. They were having officers stop traffic so that the ambulance didn't even have to slow down. He coded four times, I believe it was, which means his heart stopped completely. He died four different times and they brought him back. Little Gabriel passed away two days later. He was brain dead, I'm assuming from the bat bashing against his head. And in all this time and over 60 reports made to the Department of Human Services and to law enforcement that different people, different relatives, Gabriel himself had made. Not one time did anyone bother to step in and try to save this child. The horrific thing about it was that when this child was born, his mother gave him up. He went to live the first three years of his life with his great uncle and his partner. They described him as a sweet, sweet child. Then he went to live with his grandparents at the age of three. He lived there until about eight months before he passed away. And that's when his mother came and took him. She had two other children, and they did not receive the abuse that Gabriel did. Why or how a parent could do this to a child is beyond me. But the point being is, there was over 60 calls made to and in their state, it's called the Department of Children and Family Services, so DCFS. And they never once went to the home and checked out the home and found anything wrong. They never once listened to the school teacher who was seeing him on an everyday basis. All they would do is call up the mother and report the fact that he had said something again. 
which would cause more abuse. Folks, I, I, there's no way I could try to make, give this story justice at all. And, and I'm not attempting to because I, I can't even, there's a documentary on Netflix, a docu-series about Gabriel, it's called Gabriel's Trials, oh, the Trials of Gabriel. And you should go watch it. Also, on YouTube, there's a channel called Mystery Machines, and they do an uh, episode on it. I couldn't even come close. I, I don't even think that I can finish watching the docuseries that's on Netflix. It's so horrific. And I mean, they give you detail for detail of what's going on in this trial and what happened to this baby. And as you can see the pictures below, that was Gabriel. The first one is Gabriel when he first went to live with his mom. And the very next one is one of the very last pictures I ever took of Gabriel. The night that his mom finally called 911. And they had them come and take him to the hospital. And at that at that point in time, all she could worry about was her cats as she's being arrested. She was worried about her cats being in the apartment by herself. DCS failed this child. DCS failed a lot of children. Law enforcement failed this child. So don't tell me calling CPS is going to help or do any good. Just like in the Summer Wells case, they were called multitudes of times. And they never made the effort they should have to have ensured that those children were safe and out of harm's way. We have got to get these laws changed when it comes to the social workers who are in charge of these small children and where they are placed and where they live. I didn't mention any adult names in this video because in my opinion, every single one of them are at fault. Law enforcement, CPS, the judge, the courts. Oh, did I forget to say the so, four social? Well, there was two social workers and two supervisors who were did was brought brought up on charges in the Gabriel Fernandez case. They were facing eleven years. Guess what? The charges got dropped. Nine deputies were reprimanded for not doing what they were supposed to do to save this child's life when they were called and notified that there was abuse going on. Reprimanded. At least the DCS workers did get fired. They should have been brought up on murder charges, if, in my opinion. And I believe in the Summer Wells case and her brothers, every DCS worker, DC, CPS worker, should have charges brought against them for not handling this case the way they should have handled it in Rogersville, Tennessee. I apologize that this video isn't what I thought it was going to be, but I just, I can't do it. This is just tearing me up. I can't. Go and check out the docuseries on Netflix. The Trials of Gabriel Fernandez. Go check out the Mystery Machine and their segment they did on Gabriel Fernandez. Keep in mind, folks, there should be a trigger warning on both. Until next time.